Hello and welcome to part four, the final Thursday August Live, explaining what phonics is all about. I will be focusing on the final seventh aspect of phase one phonics, which is usually covered in preschool and nursery, phase two phonics, which is usually covered in the autumn term in reception, and as a bonus, I will also be explaining phase three phonics, which typically begins around the spring term of reception, but can vary, and phase four phonics, which typically begins around the summer term of reception, but again, this may vary. My name is Zara, I am an experienced early years in Key Stage 1 teacher and founder of Little Learners Education. Little Learners Education helps parents to give their toddler or preschooler an excellent foundation in phonics, maths and literacy without the need to sit still by teaching fun techniques through play-based interactive classes so they gain the skills for a successful head start to school and a passion for learning even if they haven't shown an interest in numbers, shapes and letters before. I will deliver this session in three sections. Firstly, to give a quick recap on what phonics is and what this means. Secondly, today I will explain in detail how the seventh aspect of phase one phonics, termed aspect seven, oral blending and segmenting, and how phase two, phase three and phase four phonics are taught within schools. And thirdly, to provide practical ideas to support the development of phase one phonics, oral blending and segmenting, phase two, three and four phonics in fun, manageable and engaging ways within your homes. As mentioned in the previous week's lives, children develop their phonetic knowledge through visual, auditory and kinesthetic learning. So I will continue to provide interactive ideas. So if you'd like to rewatch the activities with your child, it will encourage participation and a chance to experience the phonics activities together. If you have any questions related to phonics, please feel free to type them in the comment section below and I will answer them by replying to your comments following this live. So a quick recap on what phonics is all about. Phonics is a way of teaching children how to read and write. It helps children hear, identify and use letter sounds that distinguish one word from another. Phonics involves matching the sounds of spoken English with individual letters or groups of letters. There are three main steps in phonetic development as shown in this slide. Children need to be experienced with a variety of sounds around them to get them ready for learning letter sounds. They need to develop the steps one and two. The Department for Education Systematics Phonics Programme called Letters and Sounds divides the three steps into six phases. Phase one is the beginning of the systematic learning of phonics and takes place predominantly in nursery or preschool. There are seven aspects which are focused on in phase one. All of these skills need to be experienced and built upon to support reading and writing. Today, I will be going through oral blending and segmenting, providing practical ideas to support the development of this aspect and explain how the skills developed through these activities support reading and writing. Phase one, aspect seven, oral blending and segmenting. The oral blending and segmenting stage is vital before children are exposed to learning which letters or groups of letters represent each sound. It encourages children to hear, say, and blend the separate sounds and words, and to listen to the phonemes within words and to remember them in the order in which they occur. It is very important to enunciate the phonemes very clearly with pure sounds and avoid the uh. For example, mm instead of m, s instead of s, f instead of f, and so on. I will explain in the phase two section of this slide why this is important. So segmenting is hearing and saying the individual phonemes within a word. For example, the word bat is broken down into the individual sounds the a, t. Understanding how to segment a word into its separate sounds in order helps with spelling. Blending is merging phonemes together to pronounce a word. So the separate sounds of the word are spoken aloud in order all through the word and then merged together into the whole word. For example, 
at is merged and blend together to make the word cat. Understanding how to blend phonemes together helps with reading. Games to develop these skills are activity one, using a toy such as Marvin who only speaks via sound talk, which is segmenting sounds. So in this game, the child uses their knowledge of blending sounds to find out what Marvin is saying and also using their knowledge to segment sounds to speak back to Marvin. With Marvin, we play a sound talk version of Simon Says by saying, Simon Says, touch your b a k back. This is a song from the Little Learners Education class which supports this aspect. It's called Can You Copy Marvin? And the song continues. Activity two, playing I spy. Which object is Marvin spying? The cup, box, or bag? Sound talk each item. So, k, up, b, o, x, b, a, g. Then it is time to play. Look and listen. What is Marvin spying? What is Marvin spying? Can you find the object? Can you find the object? Look and listen. Look and listen. Marvin spies with his little eye. Right, Marvin spies a cup. Uh, 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 and the game continues with that as well. Activity three, you can also break down a word into sound talk when speaking about everyday routines. For example, it is time for b -e -d. bed. Can you put on your k Coat. Coat. Could you please get your at hat? Phase two. Once your child is competent within the skills in phase one, they are introduced to start recognizing the grapheme, which is the letter, which represents the phoneme, which is the letter sound. For example, the letter S makes the sound S. This typically begins when a child joins reception. Phase two builds upon the oral blending and segmenting of the previous phase, and they progress from oral blending and segmenting to blending and segmenting with letters. They are taught the grapheme phoneme representation for 20 letters, and that phonemes, the letter sounds, can be represented by more than one letter. For example, in the word fin, the f in fin is represented as one single F. And in the word huff, the f is represented as a double F. Four letters are usually taught each week. The suggested order for the teaching of letter sounds varies slightly between systematic phonics program. But usually the letters S, A, T, P, I, N, M are taught first as you can blend and segment them to read and write several simple words such as sat, pin, tap, pat. So the process of learning a sound includes saying a number of words with the same initial sound and exaggerating it, for example, snake, sun, spider. Then showing the children the grapheme, which is the letter that represents the sound. Then flashing a card with the grapheme on one side and a picture on the other.
When the children see the grapheme side, they say the sound. When they see the picture, they have to say the word corresponding to the picture. Spider. Spider. And with some phonetic programs, a song is usually taught. A little learner's education, the song that goes with is about Susie Spider who spins her web. During this phase, children will be taught to read different words using the sounds and letters they have been exposed to. For example, two letter words such as as, am, on, and it, and three letter words such as cat, dog, pen. Progressing on to reading captions and spelling words using magnetic letters. As mentioned before, pure sounds should be used when children are saying letter sounds. This means that the ah uh after a consonant should not be said, and the sound should be pronounced like this rather than f. As if I was to write the word fish not using pure sounds and said f, i, sh. It would be written like this, which can be very confusing. So pure sounds need to be used. I, sh. Like this. During this phase, the children will also be exposed to tricky words, also termed red words. These are words that cannot be sounded out. The, to, I, go, no. Phase three typically begins around the spring term and reception, but can vary. The purpose of this phase is to teach more graphemes, which are the remaining letters of the alphabet, and some sounds which are made up of two or three letters, known as digraphs and trigraphs. For example, E, as in the word B, and air, as in the word chair. Children would be taught these terms digraphs and trigraphs and become proud of knowing what these terms mean. It is important for children to quickly learn to recognize digraphs and trigraphs as one sound rather than separate letter sounds. For example, rain should be read as r a n not r a i n so children will learn that this word has three phonemes three letter sounds r a n in phase 3 children will practice blending and segmenting a wider range of cvc words consonant vowel consonant i will provide fun ideas on how to support this shortly they will also learn to sight read more tricky words and begin to spell them. These are words that cannot be phonetically sounded out. They will learn the grapheme for the phoneme and read and spell simple sentences. Phase four. Phase four typically begins around the summer term of reception, but can vary. The purpose of this phase is to consolidate the sounds already taught. Children will be exposed to adjacent consonant, consonant blends and consonant clusters and multisyllabic words. Examples of these and what this means can be seen on the slide and are taught as follows. So for the word bland, children segment to spell or blend to read what they know first. In this case, the word and. A, N, D. And then the b, b, l is placed in front to spell the word bland. Children are encouraged to start learning to read words on sight as this improves fluency and to progress from blending out aloud to blending in their head before reading on sight. So now I will go through fun practical ideas to support the development of skills mentioned in phase two, three and four. 
So the first thing to mention is make the activities fun within the home and short bursts. A general rule of thumb is a child's attention span is between two to four minutes per year of the child's age. So if the child is five years old, it will be between 10 to 20 minutes. So stop, take a break, come back to it, or chop and change between the activities to keep it fun and exciting. So firstly, I'll go through activities to support recognizing the grapheme, which is the letter, which represents the phoneme, which is the letter sound. So I have flashcards here with the letters written on them, but these graphemes can be written onto pieces of paper, card, post-it notes. Once the letters are written onto them, place them around the room or on the floor or stick them onto the wall and take it in turns being the caller. So the caller shouts out a letter and the player runs and gives it a high five. The letter sounds can also be placed onto the floor and a ball can be used to bounce onto the letter sound as it is called out or splat it with a tube, anything you think that you, your child will enjoy doing. This can be done as they come into the kitchen for breakfast as a quick activity. You can also create doubles of each grapheme to play games such as snap by saying the sound of the grapheme on the card as it's placed down into the center of the pile and shout snap when the same grapheme is placed down consecutively. You can also play memory games with these flashcards by placing doubles of the graphemes face down in rows, turn two cards over and say the sounds on them. And if the graphemes are the same, then the cards are removed from the game. And if not, they are turned back face down. And the fourth idea is singing letter sound songs. So learning through song has been shown to be an effective way to memorize and learn. Babies' first sentences are nursery rhymes, such as Twinkle Twinkle. At Little Learners Education, we have a song for each of the letter sounds, along with a fun action. So supporting reading of words. A great game to support reading of words is through writing real words and nonsense words onto circular paper or post-it notes. The game is played by blending to read the words and sorting them into treasure words, real words, by reading the words and placing it into the treasure chest, or blending to read fake words, nonsense words, which are then placed into the rubbish bin. To make this even more enticing, the coins can be buried inside sand. I've got here some rainbow rice, so it becomes a pirate treasure hunt. So you could place some paper clips on top and fish for it using a magnet. Like this, and then do the same of placing the real words into the treasure chest and the fake words into the bin. Other ways of keeping reading of words fun are writing words onto balloons. The game is played by rolling or kicking the real words into a goal and fake words thrown into a laundry basket or the bin. Matching words to pictures or matching captions to images is also a great way to support reading. A fun activity to support this is Lucky Dip. So place four to five items into a bag or a box along with the written word of the items written on strips of paper. The game is then played by the child picking out one of the items from the box and one of the strips of paper. The child then blends to read the word to see if the word matches the object. If it does, they keep it and the game continues. This is great for toys that have been forgotten about to make a reappearance and be played with again by placing them into the Lucky Dip. You can also add sh shredded paper to add to the Lucky Dip effect. Reading of tricky words. The reading of tricky words can also be turned into games such as hopscotch, bowling, ring toss, bingo and fire words. Some of these are shown in the images. So I will go through one of these examples, which is bingo. So each player selects a bingo mat, which is just a piece of paper divided into four and four pieces of paper from the box. So four tricky words from the box. Each player Select, reads the words on the pieces of paper and writes the four tricky words they have selected 
one word into each of the boxes on the bingo mat. The player then returns all their pieces of paper back into the box and then you take it in turn. So close your eyes and select a piece of paper from the box and call out the tricky word on the paper, B. All the players then check their bingo mats for this word. If any of the players have the word that was just called out on their bingo mat, they cross it out. The first player to cross out all four words on their bingo mat shouts bingo. So the spelling of words can also be turned into fun learning games. One of my favorites is spelling with Duplo or Lego. So just connecting the blocks and reading the words made. Another game is full circle. So I have magnetic letters here, but you can use pieces of paper with the letters written on each of the pieces of paper. So choose a word and ask your child to use the letters to make the word. Then just change one letter to create a new word. So for example, ask them to spell the word sat. So sat. And then say, can you change sat into sit? It. So the at is replaced by an it. And the game continues until the last word changes to make the initial word that you began with. So sat changes into sit, and then sip, and then change it into tip, and then change tip into tap, and then tap into sap, and then sap goes back into sat. You can also play this using the duplo. So you could change, ask them to change the word sat that they've made into sit. So replacing the a into an it to make sit. And the last idea to support the spelling of tricky words, which is also termed red words, in fun ways at home. Again, you could use all the examples mentioned previously, such as encouraging your child to write the words chosen from the box in the bingo game, or writing the tricky words onto balloons for a balloon burst game, or onto the hopscotch. Other fun ways to spell is by writing in different materials, such as a small tray of rice or flour or lentils, Children enjoy this as the writing is not permanent like pen and paper. If an error is made, within seconds it can be raised away by just shaking the rice, lentils or flour on the tray. They can mark make using their fingers or a feather or a paintbrush is also a great way. So a common question is, when are capital letters and letter names taught? So capital letters and letter names are taught in phase three, so around the spring term in their reception year. The letter names and sounds will be explained through an example such as, this animal is called cat. Its name is cat, but the sound it makes is meow. So in the same way, this letter is called C, but the sound it makes is Capital letters are introduced in this phase as children are introduced to sentence writing and the importance of starting a sentence with a capital letter and ending with a full stop. The reason for teaching lowercase letters first are these. Books are mainly written in lowercase letters. If the child has been taught the capital letters first, the child is denied the opportunity of participating in the text. With the child being taught the sounds and the shapes of lowercase letters, they can recognise the letters whilst they are read too. This opportunity to participate provides the confidence to explore text in other areas. Another reason why lowercase is taught before uppercase is due to the writing of uppercase letters having more starting points and requiring more strokes than pencil pickup. So uppercase letters are actually harder than lowercase letters to draw. There are more diagonals in uppercase letters, which is developmentally challenging. I hope you have found this useful. If you have any questions related to phonics, please feel free to type them in the comment section below and I will answer them by replying to your comments following this live. Goodbye.